Howdy, wonder hussy here. Forgive me, but I spent last night at the side of the road. <laughs> well, Panamint Butte Road, that is, in Death Valley, USA. This is a dirt road that comes off of the main highway through Death Valley in Panamint Valley, just before you get to Panamint Springs. And, well, this is the middle of the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, all the campgrounds are closed except the one over there in Panamint Springs. But you know I don't like to camp in official campgrounds. So the way it works here in Death Valley is if you want a backcountry camp or boondock, you're free to do so off any dirt road as long as you go at least a mile from a paved road. So the highway runs out yonder. I drove down here last night about two and a half miles and well, set up camp right here. Now it's morning and well, I need cell signal. And I also need to gas up uh, to get ready for the day's adventures ahead. And well, there's really not that many gas stations out here in Death Valley. For a place the size of, I think, Connecticut, there's only three gas stations. So you really have to plan your trips carefully. There's Panamint Springs over on the west side, and then there's Furnace Creek over on the east side, and then there's Stovepipe Wells in the middle. For some reason, even when gas is $4.50 a gallon in Furnace Creek and $6.50 a gallon in Panamint Springs, it's usually weirdly reasonable in Stovepipe Wells. Uh, I heard that's because Stovepipe Wells is actually operated by the Park Service, whereas the other two are privately owned. But I'm not sure that makes sense to me because since when does the friggin' federal government not want to gouge you? Either way, you can't always count on the gas station and stovepipe wells being open because I guess they have some issue with the roof over the pumps. And if it's windy, if there's over 25 mile an hour winds, then the gas station will be closed because I guess they're afraid the roof's going to blow off and hurt somebody. I'm assuming this is a temporary problem and hopefully they fix it soon because gosh, it sure would suck to roll into stovepipe wells on fumes and find it closed. Uh oh, pit stop. Look what's here alongside the road. I actually saw these busted old cars on my way to my campsite last night, but it was getting dark and I didn't have time to investigate, so I figured I'd do it on my way out. <laughs> okay, car guys, here's your chance. What was it? What is it? Gosh, that looks like from the 30s, I'd guess. Let's look at the, en well, I'm sure the engine's gone because this isn't that far from the highway. Oh yeah. Well, it's amazing to me that these are here at all because, I mean, we're in, you can kind of see that we're in a wash so, I mean, I guess they wash down from somewhere up yonder, but I don't know that there's any mines or anything up there. So who knows where they came from? Maybe Bonnie and Clyde left it here. <laughs> Al Capone. Wow, look at all the bullet holes. Dang. Uh, it looks like some old Buick or Oldsmobile to me. That's my guess, that little thing there. But there's really nothing to tell us what it was. Wow. Look at the bumper one more time. Yeah, nothing. Nothing left to tell us what it was, but somebody here probably knows. Okay, now how about this one? Holy moly. <laughs> this looks more like 50s, I'd guess. Oh, this is the front end that we're looking at. <laughs> I couldn't even tell what was the front, what was the back. That shows you what kind of car person I am. And then here's the, uh, it looked like it had sort of fins. That's what made me think it was kind of more of a... 50s car. <laughs> wow. Look at how friggin' rusted this thing is, man. I mean, I see a lot of these rusty old cars, but this one is, I don't know, something about it is just exceptionally rusted. Huh. I'm impressed that it's not all graffitied up, though, being as it is right off the highway. You know, we're like a mile and a half off 190, and it's an easy road to get here, so this is amateur hour. Man, I keep hearing these Freaking fighter jets flying around. This is where they do the low, low level flying. They come blazing through this valley. Matter of fact, before I was able to turn my camera on, one came blazing through real low and it would have been an amazing shot. Unfortunately, I was too slow on the uptake, but I did capture one of them in my video I did yesterday at the Eureka Dunes. So check that out. Eh, what the hey, I'm not in any hurry. Maybe I'll just uh, hang out here by these rusted cars and drink some coffee for a bit and wait and see if another guy comes through. Maybe I can catch that on film.
Oh, dang it. I don't want to wait here all morning, so. Huh, guess I'm not gonna catch one of them on camera today. Onward. Okay, I know Stovepipe Wells has the cheapest gas, but since I'm right down the road from Panamint Springs anyway, I might as well stop in there and see what they're charging today. Yikers. Of course, this being a national park, they all gouge you. <laughs> Although, to be honest, because of the coronavirus epidemic, gas prices are actually pretty cheap. I mean, I never thought I would see $3 gas in Panamint Springs. Usually it's like $6, no kidding. But there's no cell signal here, and I think I could probably get it for cheaper in Stovepipe Wells. So I'm gonna keep on heading down the road. Okay, wow, I told you, it's always cheaper here than it is anywhere else. 280. <laughs> I mean, that's less than I've been paying in Nevada. This is unbelievable. I mean, if there is an upside to this whole coronavirus pandemic, I guess cheap gas prices is it. Anyway, since I'm here, anyways, I might as well poke around a little bit. I mean, I've been here a bunch of times over the years. I mean, I've stayed here at the motel, which was fine, and I've eaten at the restaurant, which it's fine, but I actually recommend eating the food in the bar, which is better, cheaper, and there's better ambiance. And then, oh, sometimes I'll just go over into the convenience store there and pick up a snack, which unfortunately the cheap gas prices don't extend to the convenience store. It's a pretty big ripoff. But I'm usually kind of in a hurry when I pass through, so I never really have time to poke around and figure out, well, what's going on in Stovepipe Wells and why is it called? Stovepipe Wells. It's a weird name, and I have a feeling there's probably a very interesting historical explanation for it. <laughs> and this over here is actually something I've been curious to check out for a long time too, but like I said, I never really have time to stop. I think it's called Burned Wagons Point. Gosh, talk about an evocative name. I can't wait to read why it's called Burned Wagons Point. Okay, the sun is right behind it, so it's kind of hard to read, but it says... Near this monument, Jayhawker group of Death Valley 49ers, gold seekers from Middle West who entered Death Valley in 1849 seeking the short route to the mines of Central California, burned their wagons, dried the meat of some of their oxen, and with their surviving animals, struggled westward on foot. Holy cow. That reminds me of, well, I made that whole series of videos about the Donner Party and how big a struggle it was for them. To make it to California? Well, they weren't even going through Death Friggin' Valley. I mean, it blows my mind that anyone back in those days would have taken this southern route <laughs> on foot with wagons and horses and oxen. I mean, <sighs> there's no water here. Well, I mean, there is water. Obviously, the place names like Panamint Springs and Furnace Creek and, well, I guess Stovepipe Wells, there were springs at, well, sometimes pretty great intervals that they had to somehow get from one to the next and well I guess that poor group they just had enough man they burned their wagons they dried out their oxen and they just kind of gave up figure I might as well make uh, another cup of coffee while I'm here I mean if it wasn't a friggin virus pandemic I would have just gone into the general store and paid their gougy prices for coffee but gosh I'm kind of freaked out about this virus so that's why I'm out here trying to stay to myself although I have seen a lot of travelers out here. It's weird. I mean, right now it's totally deserted. Here, check this out. I mean, I've never been at Stovepipe Wells when it's this friggin' deserted. There's one other car here. Ironically, it's another white forerunner just like mine. But <laughs> ain't nobody else here. It's crazy. This place is usually jam friggin' packed. Oh gosh, that actually reminds me of, well, probably for me personally, the most interesting thing about Stovepipe Wells is that, well, it's in Inyo County, I-N-Y-O County, California. And well, Inyo County is either the biggest or the second biggest county in California. It's a huge county. It stretches all the way from the Nevada state line to the Sierras to like, you know, where Bishop is, Mammoth, all those places. So Inyo County, Stovepipe Wells is kind of like right in the middle of it. So, <laughs> I heard this from a, a local in Tacopa, California, where I've been staying uh, to sort of isolate from the coronavirus. Uh, Tacopa is a little town way over near the Nevada state line in Inyo County, but on the far eastern edge. Well, the county jail for Inyo County is way over on the western edge in the town of Independence. So apparently, according to this local I was talking to, 
<laughs> at the bar in Tacopa once. <laughs> and I actually, he did seem like he knew what he was talking about. Because the county is so big and the jail is so far away from Tacopa, <laughs> you really have to screw up royally to get arrested in Tacopa. I mean, according to this dude, <laughs> They will do just about anything to avoid having to take you all the way to Independence, which is like a four hour drive. So generally speaking, I guess if the cops are hassling you, they will escort you either to the Nevada state line or the San Bernardino County line. Either one of those aren't too far away from Tacopa uh, and they'll just sort of ask you to leave. Now again, this is hearsay, so don't quote me on it, but it's just too good a story not to include in this video. According to this guy I was talking to, if you do screw up so badly that you get arrested in Tacopa, or I guess Shoshone, either one would apply. <laughs> Supposedly the sheriff's deputy from Shoshone, there aren't any sheriffs in Tacopa, well, you know, they're Shoshone and Tacopa are like five minutes apart. Anyway, the sheriff's deputy from Shoshone will take you, drive you here to Stovepipe Wells, and then a sheriff's deputy from <laughs> way out yonder in uh, Independence will come. It's a two hour drive from Independence. It's a two hour drive from uh, Shoshone Tacopa. They'll meet here in the middle at good old Stovepipe Wells and do a, well, a good old fashioned prisoner transfer. <laughs> Man, I would die to see one of those happen, but unfortunately, doesn't look like one's gonna be taking place today. Anyway, I'm just gonna make this coffee and then uh, take advantage of the cell phone signal to check my text messages and my email and stuff. And then I think I found on the map the actual historical place where the actual stove pipe wells were. So we can actually get to the bottom of this weird name, finally, once and for all. Uh-oh, road closed. <laughs> I guess because of the virus, they shut down a lot of the parking areas and stuff, but that's okay. Uh, I just parked here at the side of the road and I looked at my paper atlas and it doesn't look like the historic stovepipe wells are very far down this road. So I'm just gonna walk. It's a beautiful day. It's probably, oh gosh, feels like it's 70 degrees. I mean, I had to take my sweater off and put a short sleeve shirt on and everything. Really nice. And what's more, <laughs> it's, wildflower season. Look, there's all these beautiful flowers growing right out of the desert. <laughs> and they're all over the place out here. I mean, I guess if you're from like a place where there's a lot of flowers, this probably doesn't look like such a big deal, but trust me, out here it is. <laughs> Man, this is an amazing day for so many reasons. First of all, it's gorgeous weather, perfect time of year to be in Death Valley. Flowers out everywhere, no crowds, no traffic, gas is cheap. Man, I don't like to say that anything good came out of this whole pandemic, but well, I'm having a nice day. It's just, you know, it is sort of tinged with an eeriness, you know? Like I saw a picture of the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, which normally is like choked with traffic. You know, a lot of people drive back and forth to commute, but it was totally empty. All the lanes were empty. And my mom, it was on Facebook, my mom commented on it that it reminded her of that song from the 60s, I guess. Everyone's gone to the moon. Well, that's what it feels like here. Deserts full of flowers, all in bloom. Everyone's gone to the moon. Anyway, we're just walking along this dusty desert road. Ain't not a soul in sight, so I'll sing whatever I want, by golly. But I think I've actually seen pictures of these stovepipe wells online somewhere. Uh, my understanding was that the original pioneers, people who were traveling across this godforsaken, sun-blasted plain, which, can we just take a minute to look around this landscape here and remember that people crossed this in wagons with horses and oxen and screaming kids. Oh my god, I, no wonder it's called Death Valley. Anyway, I think I saw pictures where I guess there's some kind of natural spring or well here. I mean, you can see in the sand dunes up ahead, there are some green bushes. So there's some kind of water here. And I think somehow they tap down into it using old stovepipes. Hence the name stovepipe well. Spoiler alert. So I don't know if there's some kind of monument up here or if there's any stovepipes left over or what. But gosh, I'll just walk down this road until, well, until I don't feel like walking anymore. And hopefully we find something. Okay, I've been walking for a while now. You can see my rig way back yonder. Still haven't seen hide nor hair of any stovepipes, but I did stumble on 
this lonely grave. Gosh, it seems like Death Valley is full of these lonely graves. Let's look at this one. I mean, look, first of all, it's just a pile of rocks, a couple of creosote branches on top, and a, well, a wood headstone that I'm guessing is not original. What does it say? Val Nolan died August 1931, buried November 6, 1931, a victim of the elements. Holy cow, so Val could be a woman or a man. I'm guessing it's probably a guy because back then women didn't travel around so much. Val died in August and wasn't buried until November. I wonder what happened. Poor guy was probably making his way across Death Valley and, well, died of exposure, I guess. And then nobody found his bones until November and then they buried him. Holy cow, what a way to go, man. I'm sorry, Val. Let me just pay my respects to Val here. You can see uh, other passersby have left coins jammed in the top of the headstone. Oh my gosh. What a difference though from that other grave that I went to yesterday uh, where the two little McKessop girls are buried. I mean, in that video it was, first of all, I was freezing. It was blasting wind, a snowstorm I didn't realize, but a snowstorm was coming in, <laughs> which I was to be caught in in the next video. Man, but I mean, compare that to this where it's wide blue skies and this huge desert plain. This, I think we're around sea level here, maybe a few hundred feet. And those McKessop girls were up more like four, four or 5,000 feet. So both of those in the same national park though. Death Valley is a land of extremes. Okay, we're here. Some kind of monument and well, I guess that's a stovepipe. Let's see what we can find out. Okay, well, first let's read what the sign says. Old stovepipe wells. This water hole, only one in the sand dune area of Death Valley, or I guess it's the only one in the sand dune area of Death Valley, was at the junction of two Indian trails. During the Bonanza days of Rhyolite and Skidoo, Rhyolite and Skidoo were two mining towns in Death Valley, it was the only known water source on the Cross Valley Road. When sand obscured the spot, a length of stovepipe was inserted as a marker, hence its unique name. Oh, okay, so I was close, but not quite. Interesting, so there was, this was the only water source crossing this entire friggin' valley. Let me just show you again <laughs> what exactly that means. I mean, they had to get all the way across this, and that little tiny well was the only water source. And because we are right next to the Mesquite sand dunes, and there's a lot of, well, it's just real sandy here, I guess it would get covered up with sand completely, and well, I mean, it was life-saving water, so they had to mark it with a stovepipe. Holy cow, let's go up there and see if it still works. I mean, you can see here at the base of these creosote bushes, or whatever those are. I guess those aren't creosote. Whatever plant that is. Yeah, a lot of sand piled up. And then, you know, sand down here. Sand here, sand there, everywhere sand. And all there is to drink was this lonely little well. Holy cow. Wow, okay, well, it looks like the well's been concreted over, unfortunately. But interesting, it had a wooden lid on it and then they cemented over top of it. What a shame, I'd love to see inside it. And then this is not a stovepipe. This is just some kind of plumbing thing they put on it. I guess maybe it does still, water does still come out of it, huh? Let's see, climb up top and look down it. Yeah, just some rocks in it now. Interesting. Made in Indiana. Any Hoosiers watching this? <laughs> wow, crazy. Well, now I know why Stovepipe Wells is called Stovepipe Wells. And it's actually more interesting than I thought. And gosh, I mean, yes, of course, I've thought about pioneers traveling through Death Valley before, but this really drives home how extreme the journey was and how harsh life was out here. Ugh. Well, I guess I'm just going to walk back to my car now. I probably probably walked about a mile, I'd guess, but it was an easy walk. Beautiful day. I'm enjoying the sun and the freedom. You know, I've been out on the road for three days now on a little solo trip. I got kind of antsy at my coronavirus isolation headquarters in Tacopa, even though I have a really nice place to stay out there. You know, I wanted to get out for a few days and I did. And boy, did I, I mean, I had sun and rain and wind and snow, <laughs> no kidding. And I shot a bunch of videos, so it seems like a fitting place to end my trip right here, right now, because, well, I actually just went in a giant loop. I started my trip 
gosh, I don't remember what day it was, Wednesday, I guess, I came down this highway to the Eureka Dunes, which are way back beyond that mountain range there. I stayed at the Eureka Dunes, and then I drove around from that all the way to the 395 at the base of the Sierras. It's the only place to get gas. I gassed up in Lone Pine, and then I circled around back down to California 190 and came back into Death Valley uh, through Keeler and Panamint Springs and, well, Stovepipe Wells. So I just made a big circle. It took me three days. I got six videos. I feel like it's a job well done, and now I deserve a break. So I'm gonna go back to Tacopa and take a little soak in one of them hot springs. <laughs> but I'm sure it'll only be a few days before I get antsy again, and gosh, by then, hopefully the weather will be good enough that I could go just about anywhere. See you then.